Let's do some GCSC physics practice questions. I'm going to be doing some OCR physics questions. However, as always, the physics is exactly the same across all exam boards. Okay, well, starting off with half-life and radioactivity. So a teacher measures the radiation from a radioactive source for 10 days. And we need to determine the half-life of this source. So the half-life means that the count rate will decrease by a factor of a half, a half of 80 is just 40. Uh, let's see, when did that happen? What we need to do is simply uh, just trace this and we can see that that corresponds to two days. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Beta radiation is used to check the thickness of thin aluminium foil. Why is beta radiation used? Now, the correct answer in this case is C, because it only partially passes through aluminum foil. Now, why is that? Imagine that you have some electrons or some beta particles. Their intensity actually drops with thickness. So depending on how much they act, it actually dropped by, we could tell the actual thickness of, uh, of the foil. Okay, next question, part A, explain the difference between nuclear irradiation and nuclear contamination. Firstly, contamination occurs when radioactive material is actually on or in the object. And irradiation occurs when an object is just exposed to radiation. Part B, explain how the gamma rays can increase the shelf life of herbs and spices to make them last longer. Well, to put it simply, the gamma rays turn them into the Hulk. Well, not really, but uh, they, uh, they kill bacteria. So the gamma rays can kill bacteria if they're emitting, uh, if the sources emit gamma rays. And that will, of course, actually, uh, well, slow down the uh, the decay of the food. Okay, next one. Some people are worried about eating irradiated food. Write down two concerns. So one of the things that people are typically worried about is actually food nuclear contamination. Contamination. And uh, the other one is uh, is having food which um, is old but looks fresh. And the reason for that is because some of the uh, bacteria may have been killed, which has slowed down the decay of the food. Uh, so it can look really fresh, but it can be actually quite old. Those are the uh, two main worries. Okay, part D, we have something about carbon. Carbon-14 is radioactive and carbon-12 is not radioactive. Explain why some isotopes are radioactive. So if something is radioactive, it means that the nuclei are, uh, are actually unstable. Describe how the nucleus of carbon-12 is different to the nucleus of carbon-14. Well, it has a different number of neutrons. We can say a different number of neutrons. If we want to be more precise, we can say that carbon-14 has two more neutrons. Should we just write this down just for our knowledge, even though it's probably not required for the mark? So carbon-14 has two more neutrons. Okay, finally we have some decay equations. Complete the decay equation for alpha emission. Okay, so if we've lost an alpha particle, this means that this number here will be 230 take away 4, so that's going to be 226. And 92 take away 2 will just be thorium 90. Here is the equation for beta emission. Okay, well, the beta particle is just uh, an electron typically, so it's going to be a zero and then minus one. Complete the decay equation for gamma 
emission. Okay, so the gamma particle is zero, zero, meaning that um, this one here will be just 92. It's still uranium. And this number here is also zero, meaning that this number up here will remain unchanged. Remember with equations, they always have to balance out. So quick check, 235 is equal to 0 plus 235. 214 is equal to 0 plus 214. 230 is equal to 4 plus 226. And then the lower numbers will balance out in uh, exactly the same way. Okay, next we have a multiple choice question. And for the purposes of revision, I'm going to go through the ones which are not correct, first of all. So it is the splitting of heavy nucleus into smaller nuclei. This is incorrect because this is actually nuclear fission. So we can just write this down. So it's nuclear fission, not fusion. It is the main way in which nuclear power generates electricity. Once again, this is nuclear fission. Helium is converted into hydrogen. That's uh, that's not correct. And finally, energy is released because mass is converted to energy. That is absolutely correct for nuclear fusion. So the correct answer is A. Okay, next one, we have a nuclear element. So that's um, American 241, which is a radioactive source, sometimes used in smoke detectors. And we're given the symbol over here. Describe the structure. Okay, so remember this here is our proton number. And this here is the number of protons plus neutrons. Following on from that, we can simply write that the nucleus has 95 protons and it has 241 take away 95, what is that, 146 neutrons. Okay, part B, so we have the decay and by emitting an alpha particle to form neptinium, I think it's pronounced, complete the balanced equation. So the symbol for an alpha particle is typically just helium, however, just right on the side, this is normally also accepted. And um, all we need to do is just balance these out. So let's start with the proton number. We have 95 on the left, so these two will have to add up to 95. So something plus 2 is equal to 95, that something is going to be 93. Same here, so 241 will be something plus 4. So this something here will be equal to 237. Next one, when smoke enters a detector, the smoke particles absorb the emitted alpha radiation and then the alarm sounds. Explain why beta and gamma sources are not suitable. Well, simply they will just pass straight through, i.e. they will not be absorbed. So we can write this down, not be absorbed. Okay, explained what is meant by half-life. Classic definition, and this is simply uh, the time taken for the nuclei to half. That will do. Explain why the half-life of this uh, element is suitable for a smoke detector. And that's 432 years. Well, it's sufficiently long. And the way we can word that, we can say that the half-life is long enough for the activity not to change significantly. 
What do I mean by that? Well, if the half-life is 432 years and we have a, we're operating a small smoke alarm for, let's say, 5 or 10 years, then um, it will not change. The activity will not change by very much and we could still have an operating uh, alarm. Okay, we have a table which shows some data for two radioactive sources. Both start with the same number of radioactive nuclei. Which source is a greater health risk? Really interesting. Explain your answer. Well, thorium will clearly be the um, greater risk. So we can say over here that uh, thorium-228 will be a greater risk. Remember, we need to explain our answer. Uh, if it has a shorter half-life, so a much shorter half-life will mean a much higher activity. Another multiple choice question. So the table gives some information about four radioactive isotopes. Which isotope is best used as a medical tracer? So if it's used as a medical tracer, it has to go through the tissue of the body. The only one that can do that is gamma. So it's either going to be B or C. And we want the one with the larger half-life so that we can produce an image. So I'm going to go with B, which is the correct answer. Next one, which statement is true for all isotopes? And remember, an isotope will have the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. And this corresponds to B. Another one on nuclear fusion. And we have this reaction, which is incomplete. What else is produced in this reaction? Well, let's have a thing. We have hydrogen 2. So we can write this as H21 plus hydrogen 2, which is H21. Now, it gives us helium-3, which uh, is, so helium is 2. And the fact that it's helium-3 means that we're going to have 3 across here. Now, we can clearly see that the number of protons is balanced. However, the total number, the total mass number of protons plus neutrons is not balanced. So here we only have one neutron, whereas here we have two neutrons, me meaning that we must get an additional neutron. So we can say over here that there is a neutron. Typically, we would write that as so. Okay, stars are for formed from dust and gas. What causes the dust and gas to undergo fusion? Well, gravitation and very high temperature. And temperature. Describe one similarity between nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. So in each of them, we can say that mass is converted to energy, converted to energy, like so. Describe one difference between nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. So in nuclear fusion, so I'll just write this down here, in nuclear fusion, the uh, two lighter nuclei combine into a heavy nucleus. Whereas in nuclear fission, it is the opposite. So a heavy nucleus splits into lighter nuclei. There isn't a lot of space on those papers. Okay, nuclear fission can be used as a power source to produce electricity. Give one advantage and one disadvantage of using nuclear power to produce electricity. Okay, advantage, there's actually no carbon dioxide produced. And we also have this disadvantage. We can just simply write nuclear waste.
Okay, folks, well, hopefully this has been very, very useful. Remember, I've covered the entire topic of the um, of the atom and atomic physics and nuclear physics and radioactivity. So you need to have a look at this video right over here.